Talk about life throws you a lot of lemons. Life throws you a lot of lemons. You have to learn how to make lemonade, or you won't make the grade. Lead on, adventurer. Your quest awaits. The next part of our picture is to the, do the rendering part of it. So now that we have all of our information for our figure, we kind of know our muscle structure, our armature, we know the animation of the pose, we know exactly what we want, we might end up with a line drawing that kind of feels like this, where in this case I've looked for specific measures of perspective. Every little change of direction on the surface here equals uh, more closely related objects or further distant objects so like for example on the arm up here the highest point along the edge of the muscle is the furthest point across from us on the other side of the figure that's a point along the a <coughs> along the form where an apex of the curve is changing radically and that sort of indicates to our eye a change of direction, a sort of a vertice, if you will. Um, kind of like in 3D modeling. We're looking for a high density poly mesh that we're going to wrap around the figure that gives us points of reference for the changes of surfaces. So now that we have a nice line drawing in there, we also need to keep in mind that that line drawing shouldn't necessarily be. Um, a perfect outline in a very very dark value but it should be a near perfect outline in a much lighter value knowing that the edges of your drawing are going to become a part of the form there will no longer be an outline in the picture and so if you draw the outline with too much blackness to it, <coughs> then you're kind of sealing the picture up within a boundary or, or encapsulating the figure. And we're drawing from the outside inward on the figure and we're kind of keeping everything contained within. But if we really want the figure to breathe in 3D space, this means realism, this means rendering, then we have to omit the outline eventually. It has to go away to some kind of value that relates to the surface so we don't want those outlines hammered in at a very very dark value we want them to we want them to stay as light as possible once we've done this then we look for the edges of the shadows now this is the edges of the shadow realistically and what I mean by that is that surface forms are not spherical so muscles have more of this kind of a design to it right here. This is called a flank. And a flank has walls. And each of those walls is rounded in both directions, this way and this way. So ultimately, in the end, it's almost like a, uh, it's like a chiclet, if you know what a chiclet is. I don't know if you know what a chiclet is or not. It's a candy. Anyway, candy like that. Um, and or a pillow I mean just think of a pillow the way a pillow sits on the floor uh, it, it, it kind of has a roundedness to it all the way around but it kind of has a sharpness to it and kind of has walls to it that's what our muscles are like they are not like these two shapes over here those two shapes for realism we have to be very careful about now we will see some concave shadows in the figure somewhere along the way more than likely, they will be oblique surfaces to our eye, which means that they are not flat to our eye, but they're very askew. And we're barely catching them as they go away from our eye or as they get covered up by something else. That's when we might see a concave edge. Otherwise, everything we're going to look at is convex. And in this particular photograph, everything is convex. But you're going to have to trust that I know what I'm talking about in order for you to see it because it does exist you have to look for it now there is a difference here between realistic shadows as I've done here and not realistic shadows like these these are called fast forms and fast forms are all concave as you can see 
And if you think about the sphere thing, notice how each one of these makes each of these segments look like a long oval or a long ellipse, like a football shape or a sphere shape. And muscles just aren't like that. The rib cage is because the rib cage is sort of egg like, but the muscles that sit over it and the angularity of all the ribs prevents it from feeling that way because everything grows outward off of the body. So it has to have a volume to it. And almost every single muscle has a flank like quality to it all the way around it, even where the muscles are all stuffed together. They all kind of form a wall rather than a sphere. So we want to keep this in mind. Now, fast forms are good for animating. If you want something to feel like it's moving, then a fast form might be the way to go. But if you're looking for realistic, then we have to be very careful about what we mean by realistic. And we have to be mindful of, again, the edge quality. I'm lightening the edge of the outline so that it matches the fill within so that these values are more lightly related to each other and not black as black can be. Now this has to do with finding a value contrast. How bright or how how dark or how light is my light source and how contrasted is it to the local surface. So I have to think about the difference between the higher and the lower value, the higher value being where the light is, the lower value being where the shadow is, and the quality of contrast. Now I can see here that this is a high contrast quality, but because there's so much reflected light in the shadows, they actually aren't black, not like his shorts. His shorts actually are very black um, in their color value, although they're not because they're lit. but that is going to be where the darkest values go. So if that's the case, then the body needs to be considerably lighter in order for it to feel like flesh and like a lighter value from what he's wearing and from the floor. So we go through our different keys of contrast. We go through our different value contrasts, uh, whether it's a high key of contrast, a middle key of contrast, low key of contrast, a normal contrast range. Um, or do we put it into the major minor keys of contrast and we think about the big picture and then how the transitions work between each other within it, which would be the minor key situation. Here, we're just basically looking for a key structure. What can we call it? In this case, I'd say it's middle low. Middle low to middle key of contrast because our values are in the middle range. He has darker skin and he has a dark shadow. So the white in the background tells us how dark we can start. And that's nowhere where a 1, 2, or a 3 are on the value scale. It's more like a 4 or a 5. So that means in the middle of the value range. So middle. Now it leans towards a slightly darker value. So middle low contrast range. Middle low key of contrast. The shadows aren't black and the lights aren't light their middle and their middle low value. That's our first thing to take note of and we have to keep that in mind so that when we block in our shadows we don't block them in improperly, meaning we don't block them in at the wrong value range. So we're going to think about this one and we're going to make it the proper value that we need it to be in the figure. Our shadows are going to be somewhere right around there. And then we still need to put in a local value, the local value being his skin color. Now we have two gradations to deal with. We have a vertical gradation. The light is the brightest up top, and it gets dimmer as it goes down, except for where the feet extrude. And the value of the feet are somewhere near the lighter value up near his hip. They aren't bright, like way up at the top where his head is. That's where the light source is the brightest. But they are light lighter than the rest of the body. So we think about that. That's a surface change. We also have the horizontal gradient, the gradient that goes across the body. And any surface form that breaks away from the other surface forms, like this arm in the back right here catching this light over here, that is going to be a new change of gradient. But that value over there is going to be darker than the lightest value over here because it's farther from the light source. So closer forms get brighter in contrast 
farther forms or further forms from the light source get darker in their contrast or closer together in a middle low value scale. And those are the two things we have to think about when we begin blocking out the lights. Now if you squint your eyes, you can see the value changes pretty radically across the top of his shoulders. The area that I'm going to render for this picture is going to be in this particular space right here. I'm going to render across there, maybe a little bit across here, but I'm not going to get too caught up in the whole picture. But that's the area that I want to render because I want to show you how to turn the surfaces and include the details based upon the anatomy that you know is there. And so let's go ahead and start working on that rendering now and, and we can begin by finding the local values of him, the, the local surfaces that are lit. Okay, so I've blocked out a rough of the entire figure starting up at the top lighter, getting darker as it goes down through the figure, and then getting lighter in a few places where the surface or sl surfaces are slightly upturned. There will be a few points where we put a counterpoint of light in there, but it isn't going to change the overall complex, uh, uh, the condition of the complex shadows that we have here, where it's lighter up top and it gets darker down below, but we have rounded forms and so forth. I've also done the gradients across the form horizontally around each major surface area before I get involved in the small minor complexities of everything. With all of this established, with all of these values ready to go, and as crude as they are, I'll still get my rendering the way I need to. I have to have a starting point though. I have to have some place to begin so I have something to work with because if I have only little bits of information blocked in. If I just like work on the head, for example, I'm not really doing what I should be doing when I'm drawing this picture. I should be thinking of the whole. How does the head relate to the body? Not does how the head look. You know, that's a vanity thing. I'm not concerned about the, the vanity of the piece yet. That's a totally different concept altogether. Does it look good? Does it look pretty? Does it look right? That's what we're searching for towards the end. But in the beginning, I'm constructing this thing so that I have everything put together properly. I have everything orderly and in its place, and I can begin dissecting the value schemes and the smaller surfaces and get them to relate to each other more appropriately, uh, getting surfaces to turn even farther. Uh, because I could start to see the relationship of linking values, the values that tie the shadows to the lights, the values that tie the light surfaces to the background, or the dark surfaces to the background, wherever we might be within the picture space. That's the very next thing that I'm searching for, and that requires now thoughtfully rendering through the form and combining the shadows with the lights. Now, keep this in mind as well. I'm not looking at, for any kind of uh, core shadow as of yet, and I'm not looking for any form shadows in this particular stage. I'm looking to get the lights to match the darks or come up to the edge of the notan so that I can begin developing my edges. Now, when I get really good at this, I can block out these notan stages without any sharpness to this. I can actually get all the edges to work and keep it the no tan that it needs to be. But for this exercise, it's good to break these things apart so that you can control everything. And I'm literally building every value here as a control, right? So this is all of my gradient right now of the light side. My no tan is its own thing on the darker side. And then I'm gonna build a brand new layer, which I'm gonna call transition of edges of Terminator. Really long and drawn out name like that for all of you so that you understand what I'm doing here. But what I'm building is the Terminator. That is the edge between the lights and the darks. And I'm using the value of the Notan, uh, which means I'm using a lighter value in here, not a darker value. And I need to put this up above so that I can work on the edges. And what that means is now I'm going to think about what kind of transition is actually taking place between the lights and the darks. What's the connection between them? How do I get one to relate to the other? And how do I keep the shape 
without destroying it, but how do I relate to a new way of getting these shapes to connect together? Like this isolated shape over here isn't really so isolated, right? There's a middle value that connects the two together. And that middle value is also going to be the transition value along the edges of these shapes that get them to soften up. Or it's going to be relatable to that middle value. So already you can see how these edges are getting softer. And what I'm doing to make the edges work, once I have enough of the, the value in the picture, I then start grabbing from around it because there's going to be a transition somewhere in here, right? Everything is going to transition together if I'm using the appropriate gradients to connect them together. So I'm just grabbing from those and I'm using those gradients to help me control these edges to get them to read more in the way that I need them to. And keep in mind that every edge changes everywhere because of the differences of muscles that are changing in every space and their orientation in space to you the viewer how we perceive or you perceive at this point because you're the artist you're the artist viewing this information and you have to translate it for us the rest of us to get we have to get it right we have to understand it so what do you do to make that so and how do you do that right and if you have an order and a process for doing that as we've done here everything has been in an order and this is the order that we learn it in in class um, you will eventually understand how to do this so you don't need this orderly thing anymore you build your own rules you make your own way of doing things when you go to an art class you follow the rules you follow what you're being t told and taught because if you don't then you won't understand what it is that you're in there for in the first place you won't learn anything from that information um, by resisting it and doing the thing that you normally do now it doesn't mean that any one person's rules are better than anybody else's it's just we all break it down into information that I think is digestible in our own way we each translate it in our own way and then you come into the classes and you learn from us in those particular ways um, now every way that I have or everywhere that I've taught every studio that I've worked at every art director position that I've worked in I do this I work and break things down very mechanically because everything can be when something is broken it's because it's mechanically broken the artfulness comes later right now we're building something up we're being very mechanical about the nature of what we're doing we're thinking gradients and we're thinking edge quality we're not thinking about the difference in values between these edges. We're just thinking about the gradient transitions between the lights and the darks. And we're trying to get all of those gradients to work for us instead of this being a rigid surface that's actually in the end going to fight with us more than help us solve problems. Right. So this is the way we work it out in some of my art classes. This is where we get very what you call analytical about it. This is analytical figure drawing. Or this is also stemming from construction and abstraction, but we're in the rendering stage now, so we're being very analytical about our decisive, we're being very decisive and very analytical about our choices we're making in terms of the surfaces, the gradients, the edges, and so forth, and the values. We have to draw pictures like this sometime in our career, regardless of how cartoony we get, because ultimately what this is is like the marathon. If you're a runner, the marathon is the ultimate run. You have to work your way towards that though. Marathons aren't just something you can jump in and do. Just like really good picture making, it's not something you're just gonna all of a sudden be doing. You have to work your way towards it. You have to learn something. So along the way, you learn how to see and you learn how to do. And those two things together are coupled with a whole bunch of technical information that you kind of learn about and you use it and everybody will give you something a little bit different along the way and your job is to figure out how all of those things fit together because everybody's basically saying the same thing they're just using a slightly different variant because they've kind of gone through their career and figured things out or they've taught for a while and figured things out or they're teaching for the first time and they're just teaching you the rules as they do them right anything goes in there but all of it counts so what we're doing right now is we're working towards a very academic end approach by surf searching for the edges along this way and whatever edges we've destroyed we have to find back again and we have to find them at the proper gradient so i'm going to look for some edges i'll come back 
and we'll start a part three. I didn't realize we're going to have a part three, but we're going to have a part three. See you soon. Ocean.